Barbara Kurga. Thank you, Mr Chair. It was a pleasure to wait for the other Barbara. <laughs> and I have to say, um, if anyone's in Inglewood next Monday morning, there'll be two Barbaras speaking in support of breast cancer as well. This national government is making each health dollar go further. There are 5,500 more doctors and nurses with 1,000 fewer managers and administrators. And what that means for me is there's more people in our community shifting primary health care out to where the people live. And some examples that I just want to give to you around this today is that uh, the half a million that was put into rural mental health has been uh, widely used in terms of training people to pick it up and help with cases early before people get to the stage where they need uh, to be in hospital if possible. So it's more identification, more knowledge around that. And I agree with uh, Kevin Haig before when he talked about the things that we used to do uh, to people with mental health many years gone by, and I'm pleased we've passed that. And I do believe also that the stigma is listening, lifting. When I see uh, 480 people come out in Hawara um, to listen to John Kerwin speak on mental health. So really pleased that the community is totally aware of it. Other things that are happening in terms of shifting uh, health care out into our communities, this week um, all of you here in Parliament will have the opportunity uh, to visit on the forecourt the mobile health care units. They are visiting Parliament, really pleased to have them here, um, a lot more than there used to be, so we're going to be looking at the mobile breast screening unit, the mobile dental unit, mobile lithotripsky, and for those of us that are not medical uh, backgrounds and lay people, that's about blasting your kidney stones. Um, the mobile surgical unit will be there. Um, I've been lucky enough to watch a, I've been lucky enough to watch an operation in that surgical unit, and it's absolutely brilliant concept. But what's actually um, even more exciting are there are more technologies in the making, and so the diagno diagnostic technologies that we're going to be looking at that are traditionally in the realms of hospitals are more and more and more being brought in our communities. So things like prostate function, things like respiratory function, mole mapping, endoscopy, which is about your digestive tract, skin lesions, those sorts of things. So it's going to be a real pleasure uh, to be associated um, with those uh, surgical buses and healthcare units that are coming uh, to Parliament. Uh, the other thing that's happening this week is that um, I'm opening the Rural Nurses Conference on Thursday night. It's a real pleasure to be doing that. The Rural Health Association or the Alliance in New Zealand is coming to Parliament and or to Wellington as well. Um, they'll be talking to us tomorrow. So there's a whole lot going on in our communities that's taking primary health care closer to where people live. Now, you would have heard uh, Minister talking before about um, the integrated data and actually people's health. Um, you know, if somebody's not doing well, is it a health issue? Um, is it a learning disability? Is it, um, a, you know, is it hearing? Is it, you know, there's a whole range of things that with integrated data we can pick up. And I was very impressed last week uh, when I joined the Prime Minister and the Māori Party in Tikawiti. We had the Tamaranui Community Kokiri Trust uh, in Tikawiti uh, demonstrating all the services that they offer. But the best service that they actually offer is that when people go on their door, they end up with a one-stop service. And so this is the beginning of some of those integrated community services, whether it's a health issue, a social support issue, a housing issue, people come in very confused about where they need to go. That business has a source of navigators who are totally there to help people uh, work on whichever issue they need to and connect them to the right place. So their health and social well-being is taken care of. They also have these wonderful groups of people that go out in their blue T-shirts. They do dancing in the community. They're fit, they're active, they're working a whole lot on prevention as well as cure. Um, so I'm really heartened with what's happening in health and with what I see in my community and uh, very uh, pleased to be standing here um, in support of the national government today and uh, I look forward to all the things that are happening and uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you, members. The question is, 
that the reports of committees relevant to the health sector be noted. Those who are of that opinion will say aye. aye. The contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question is that the reports of the committees relevant to the justice sector be noted. Um, I'll just, before the, I call the member, I'll just remind members that business committee has given permission for the chairs of select committees to lead each debate on the basis that they are recapping evidence that came before the committees that they've taken over time as opposed to a, f a future um, projection on their speeches. So, uh, would some member take the call? I call, I call Jackie Dean. With those words echoing in my 